Hey, and welcome back, lovely people. Today we're going to talk about one of my favourite subjects, aviation, yeah! <laughs> and specifically about jet engines and how they work. What Frank Whittle invented was a way of pushing hot gas out the back of an engine and pushing the plane forward. It's amazing, but it's actually quite inefficient. The old propeller turning and pushing the air backwards, an air screw, it's another name, works really well. So in more efficient modern engines, you have a tiny hot core of a turbine, jet bit of the engine, turning this massive fan in a duct, fan ducted engines. And they're very efficient and a lot less polluting to the world, but there's still something that comes out the back. So I'm British, so I'm going to call them vapour trails. <laughs> so vapour trails are caused by the exhaust of the jet portion of the engine pushing out its gases and tiny unburnt bits of carbon from its carbon-based kerosene fuel into the high atmosphere. And what happens is if there's enough moisture, water vapour in the air in low pressure, these little bits of particulate matter and the hot gases form ice crystals and then those coalesce into clouds and we see them like this as vapour trails stretching across the sky. Now I'm going to tell you a bit of a secret and very much a personal story about the hidden truth of vapour trails. Mm -hmm. So I've talked in the past about my family and we lived on the west coast of Scotland at the bottom of the Mull of Kintyre in a beautiful house overlooking the ocean. But we also saw something else. We saw high up in the sky, the vapour trails, the contrails of transatlantic flights transiting from the North America over to Europe. I mean, these weren't planes that were going to land in England, in Britain. These were you know, planes going elsewhere, but they were all crossing the Atlantic. And that route, that northern Atlantic route, just happened to be visible from our house. It, we're in that Presswick air um, control zone, which is part of the control route over the North Atlantic. And you know, a lot of planes fly over it. And my father, bless his cotton socks, saw something very interesting, which was very, very well observed as he spent his day looking for smugglers. Uh, I really mean it. <laughs> he spent his day out the front window looking for ships out at sea, and he saw a lot. But he also looked at the weather, and he looked at these vapour trails, and he hated them, because what he saw was these high, white, wispy clouds coming out the top, out the back of transatlantic crossing aircraft, and he saw the vapor trails, these cirrus clouds, and cirrus means the height of the cloud. These cirrus clouds, these vapor trails coalescing during the day to form a white, misty cloud layer. And he would say, those vapor trails are changing the weather. Well, it's really interesting. He was correct. But was it changing the weather in a good way? or a bad way? Well, the argument for that is fascinating. So immediately after the tragedy of 9-11, airspace in the US was basically closed for about two weeks. There was nothing flying. Now, agricultural stations in places like Texas measure the amount of sunlight reaching their fields as normal. And what they found is really interesting. They found that there was a small but noticeable percentage of increase in solar radiation during the two weeks that planes weren't flying. It can only correlate to one thing. And they figured out that one thing was the lack of aircraft vapor trails, contrails in the sky, and they were correct. And they said that vapor trails, when they're in the sky, cause global dimming. 
And this phrase became quite big in the 1990s and, of course, was used by the <laughs> fossil fuel industry and the aviation industry to say, aircraft are good. They're actually reflecting the sunlight back into space. And that is partially true. But a new report today has come up with this new piece of evidence, which is actually quite scary. A fantastic university in London called Imperial College, which is an engineering school, and a university in Japan have written a report saying that vapor trails are bad for climate change, and they have turned the global dimming argument on its head. So let's discuss that. What they've discovered is that vapor trails actually do coalesce, thanks dad, into serious high level clouds, and they form a blanket forming a greenhouse effect, making the earth warmer. And they're saying that these vapor trail clouds are actually contributing over 50% to the problem of aviation industry affecting the climate. They accept that the carbon dioxide coming out of the back from burnt kerosene lasts for hundreds of years, and we know how carbon dioxide absorbs infrared radiation and makes the atmosphere warmer. I mean, that's accepted. But they're finding that the vapor trails, if they coalesce, or there's, there's lots of them, actually make a big contribution to trapping the heat down here on Earth. And they're looking at ways to mitigate this, which is really interesting. And they've come up with this fascinating thing that the aviation community, the airline community, could do today. And I think secretly the military already know about. So, of course, vapor trails, contrails, are really bad for secret aircraft or any military aircraft. You can find out where the aircraft is by following the white line in the sky. Oop, there's the plane. So they want to make vapor trails disappear. So the military have come up with both technology and research to look at how these paths in the sky. These vapor trails are actually formed and of course they want to discover a way of mitigating them. But the aviation, the airline industry also need to get rid of them if they're actually causing 50% of global forcing. So this new research has found something extremely simple and I think extremely hopeful that both military and airline industry can do. They found that if you can measure the humidity of the air at the layer that your flight level that you're flying at and alter your flight level maybe just by a couple of thousand feet up or down, you can mitigate and cause no vapor trails. And no vapor trails are a good thing. Do you work either in the military or the airline industry? And do you have a way of measuring the humidity I know you have outside air temperature gauges and wind speed. You can compare your ground speed with your true air speed. But can you measure the amount of water vapor in the air that will make a contrail visible or not visible out the back of your aircraft? I wonder if you can. And that's what I'm asking today because I'd love to know the answer. B2 pilots out there who watch this channel, I know they do. Do you have that instrument in your cockpit that shows you a likely that you're likely forming contrails? Do you have a, a rear looking camera? <coughs> I don't know. And in the airline industry, you know, what do you do about it? I think you probably don't do anything because you are locked and told and instructed under instrument flight rules to fly at a set flight level, and you're not going to alter it by a couple of thousand feet. I mean, I know you can request it, but I don't think at present you're doing that. So maybe this tiny tweak going up a few hundred feet or down a few hundred feet into drier air will reduce the contrail issue. The truth is up there.